Uh, welcome, everybody. Welcome to America Decides. And welcome also our colleagues and friends in Florence, where I know we will be streaming live and they're watching us here right now as we speak. <clears throat> There's an estimated 134 million Americans who will be voting to determine who will occupy the White House for the next four years, what party will be controlling the House of Representatives and the United States Senate. Whatever happens, one thing I, we can all be sure, this election will change history like no others. And before I do go on, uh, express my views on the election, I would like to ask for a big round of applause for tonight's sponsors, whose names you'll see on the poster boards and TV screens. And without Without them, we wouldn't all be here tonight. So thank you, sponsors. <clears throat> now, we have two to three more hours until the polls close on the East Coast and up to six hours until they close in Western states. There's a long night ahead, but the evening will be filled with news reports of what we can expect, and you'll be seeing them here. So get ready for a roller coaster ride. And I hope you, like me, like roller coaster rides because we're in for one. In a way, it's appropriate that we may be here all night to watch the electoral returns because this campaign has been causing anxious Americans to lose sleep for weeks, if not months. Social media, 3 a.m. tweets, Hacked emails have only added to the stress. Never in my memory has there been an election that has presented two candidates with two starkly different views of America. In 2008 and 2012, elections were about hope, and yes, we can. In 2016, this election is about fear, hate, and no, you can't. How is it that America's politics has fallen to such depths? Let me offer a few observations. President Barack Obama was swept into office eight years ago on a wave of very high expectations, and he has accomplished much. Health care reform, which has provided health care insurance for 20 million Americans who previously were uninsured. It has created 15 and a half million new private sector jobs, a worldwide climate change agreement, which has been spearheaded by President Obama, diplomatic relations with Cuba, the Iran nuclear accords, and most significantly, a $1 trillion stimulus plan that saved American economy from a state of free fall as he began his term, something that continues to help sustain our economy to this day. But a paralyzed American political system stymied President Obama from implementing many of his electoral promises. His political opponents actually shut down the government, refused to pass a budget, and blocked his judicial appointments from even being voted on in the United States Senate. Compromise became viewed as weakness, and obstructionism was the rule of the day. The net effect? Many voters became totally frustrated by political gridlock and distressed, a distressed system they believed no longer worked for them. This bitterly contested and vitriolic election is a byproduct of that mistrust. But despite all of this, I'm optimistic about the power of America's recovery. Experience has led me to ultimately trust the goodwill and sound judgment of the American people. And the eagerness by which Americans, ordinary Americans, want to bring this exhausting election to an end is a clear sign of their desire to move forward in a positive and productive way. California, where I spent much of my early career, offers a compelling example of the positive impact 
of structural reform that seems to evade so many countries. By the early 2000s, California was considered by many to be a failed state with a growing budget deficit, inability to pay its bills and even pay its own employees. It had the lowest credit rating of all 50 states. In desperation, voters turned to an actor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, to save them, just as he did in his films, but even the Terminator couldn't make any progress. California's salvation came not in the form of a politician, but by an innovative process adopted by the voters. Through a series of ballot referendums, California enacted major electoral and legislative reforms, including tax increases, and these changes promoted transparency and accountability. As a result, eight years later, California has blossomed to become the world's sixth largest economy, larger than Italy. Californians have come to view government as an instrument to unite rather than divide, and Republicans and Democrats actually now work together in California. This has been a key factor in turning things around. California may well serve as a bellwether for our country and indeed other nations. These problems can be fixed. Among America's greatest strength is its history as a nation of immigrants. Everyone in America has come from somewhere else, including me. My own Italian grandparents moved to the United States at the turn of the last century. America has been gifted with access to the world's best talent and most courageous and entrepreneurial spirits. Here is something to be mindful of tonight. As you watch these returns, pay close attention to the backstory on immigrant voters. Early voting shows a voter surge among those new, newer Americans, especially those of Hispanic origin. Such high turnout may be decisive tonight, tipping the election in key states like Florida, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Nevada. And wouldn't it be fitting, a fitting ending of this election if America's dreamers, our new immigrant citizens, prove to be the catalyst for restoring our faith and the world's faith in the American dream. So thanks for joining America on what I believe is one of its most important nights ever. May Americans choose wisely. Thank you for all for coming and enjoy everything this evening. Let's all hope for the best. Thank you.